Hi everyone! This time we'll once again take a short break from creating shaders. Instead, I'll describe how we can test a game developed in the Godot engine on the Steam Deck and what needs to be ensured or verified before we release our game for this console as well. This tutorial is intended mainly for Steam Deck owners who would like to test their game on it before it's released. However, it can also be useful for others, since you will learn what to watch out for so that your game gets at least a playable label. So, how do we get an unfinished and unreleased game onto the Steam Deck? The first step is to create a Linux export for our Godot project. Yes, it's true that the Steam OS supports Windows games through a compatibility layer called Proton, but I still think it doesn't hurt to also test a native Linux version, so we can later add it to the list of supported platforms. So, I'm going to demonstrate this process using the game whose development I cover in my book Goro 4 Advanced Game Development. This tutorial is actually taken from the book, because I dedicate an entire subsection to testing on the Steam Deck. I have a game called Brick Breaker open, but everything I'm about to show can be applied to any other game. So, to be able to export, you need to install and configure the export templates. I cover this topic in detail in another tutorial, so I'll keep it very brief here. Very well, let's open the editor and manage editor templates. Uh, I mean manage export templates, of course. As we can see, I already did this before, so the dialog shows the message. Export templates are installed and ready to be used. It means that we don't need to do anything else. Otherwise, we would simply click this button, download and install, and let Godot perform the action. So I can close this. And now I will open the export dialog in project export. Okay, as we can see, I've already added presets for Windows and Linux, but if any of them were missing, I would simply click add and choose them from the list. These presets need to be configured, and I cover this topic in depth in the tutorial I mentioned and linked in this video's description. For the purposes of this tutorial, we only need to set the basics, which means the export path parameter. Let me show more of that. Yeah, here it is. As you can see, I've set different path uh, for uh, both uh, uh, for both platforms, so we can easily recognize which exported files we have to use for the Steam Deck. Besides that, I've checked the embed PCK, uh, this one, embed PCK box, which means the game assets will be exported as a part of the executable file, that is, brick paper exe in the Linux uh, uh, <laughs> for the Windows uh, build and brickbreaker.x86-64 for Linux. This is optional. If you prefer to have your assets in a separate PCK file, leave this parameter unchecked. Okay, so we are ready to export. It's important that both folders already exist. Otherwise, Godot would display an error message after clicking the export button. So I will click export all and choose release. We can also pick debug if our game differentiates between the two modes. So clicking release and it's exporting right now. Let's wait for it. Okay, Godot has finished the export. And if I switch to the uh, Windows Explorer, we can see in the export folder that uh, I have Windows and Linux, and if I open Linux, there are files that will soon send to the Steam Deck. As you can see, besides the executable, uh, which one is it? this one, there are two additional files originating from the Godot Steam add-on, which I cover in another separate tutorial. Okay, let's switch back to Godot. The next step is to download and install an application called SteamOS DevKit Client. We can find it 
on the page I have already opened in my Chrome. And this URL is also included in the video description. The page contains a direct install link right here, which, uh, as we can see, points to an URL which, uh, with the Steam prefix. This means we need to have the Steam client running for the installation to work. So let's make sure that the Steam client is running. Then we click the link, and after a moment, we can we will see a new application in our Steam library. I already have it there, of course, so I'll just show it. Here it is. Okay, and let's launch it. Starting up. And uh, now we can see that a rather unattractive window appeared, telling us that no dev kit is available. So, in other words, it wants us to enter the IP address of our Steam Deck console, which is uh, which it will then connect to. But how do we find it? Fortunately, the Steam Deck is a fairly smart device and we can easily locate the required information. So both the PC running Godot and the Steam Deck needs to be connected to the same local network. Then on the Steam Deck, let's click the Steam button, find the settings internet section and select the current network. Okay, now I will press the A button to open the info panel. And here, among other details, we can find the line labeled IP address. So let's copy its value into the connect to Steam Deck by IP field in the SteamOS DevKit client window. So it was 192.168.1.1. Two and uh, don't click connect just yet. Let's go back to the Steam Deck and open settings system where you need to enable the enable developer mode switch. Now scroll down a bit to the newly added developer menu, menu and click pair new host. All right, now we can get back to the SteamOS DevKit client and click connect and let's wait for it. It should take a while. And now something is going on. Yeah, the two devices, <laughs> two devices paired and we should see much more information there by now. So in the top bar, this one, let's click title upload and fill in the details according to our Linux export settings in Godot. As you can see, I already did that. So all we need to enter is the local folder. It points to the export Linux folder I uh, set in the export settings in the Godot project and the start command, which is simply the executable file, brickbreaker.x86 underscore 64. Okay, and that's all. Now we can click upload and wait for the upload to finish, and it's done. And now the game is installed on the Steam Deck, and we can find it under the non Steam category. And that's everything. Now you just need to click on the game and start testing it. If you want to upload a new version later, simply repeat the whole process. Okay, what's left? At the beginning of the video, I said that the game has to meet certain criteria to be compatible with the Steam Deck and increase its chances of earning the Steam Deck verified badge. But what are those criteria? First, the game must have full controller support and display icons matching its buttons and sticks. In the book, I mentioned uh, we've paid attention to this from the very start of development, so we should be safe here. In addition, the game should automatically display the on-screen keyboard if text input is required. We don't have anything like that uh, in this game, so that's fine too. Second, the game should not display any compatibility warnings if the Steam Deck platform is detected. We definitely don't do that and hopefully Godot doesn't either. Third, the game should support the Steam Deck screen resolution, which means uh, I think 1280 by 800 or 1280 by 720. 
let's just start this game and we can verify that we already have it there in the settings yeah click quick quick 1280 by 720 perfect so we are fine here and fourth if the game is launched through proton all its components must be compatible with this layer but since we are using the linux export this point doesn't concern us does it sound easy we are not out of the woods yet all text must be also readable so we shouldn't use fonts that are too small when steam reviewed our adventure whispers of prague which we didn't expect anyone to play on such a small screen we received the second best batch playable but what kept us from the green verified badge was precisely a font issue. In any case, for the game we've been creating in the book, the text should also be fine. If not, we can always enlarge them. Thank you very much for watching. Even though we didn't create any new visual effects this time, I still believe the information in this tutorial is useful for anyone planning to release a finished game on the Steam platform and wants their game prepared for as many devices as possible. And if you've completed and released such a game, please let me know in the comments or on our Discord. For now, have a wonderful day. Good luck with your projects and I'll see you in the next video.